This post went viral on Instagram for absolutely every good reason. Hello friends and thank you so much for coming back to the channel. Now today I am like super soaked. I literally think that this is like the ultimate hack when it comes to seed starting. When I came across this viral post on Instagram, I instantly was like in love, drawn to this method and I knew I had to do it. So the original poster is free to sober on Instagram. Literally this post went like super viral within a week and literally I tried it that day. Shares her tomato seeds, she does um, eggplants, she has onions, she had celery. She just had so much started in these seed snails. So if you're like me, you probably have never heard or maybe even seen something called a seed snail. And it is basically what it kind of looks like. It is simply just seed starting mix wrapped in a material. Now, the original poster used like a, a foam wrap thing that you would definitely see it come with like your TV, something that's going to protect it and it's like super, super thin. Now I don't have that, but I went searching throughout my house for maybe something that was very close. I didn't find that either, but I did have this huge roll of burlap that I was gonna use for a grow bag. And I thought that, hey, I might as well just try it and start it out. Now a note, when using burlap, these might dry out a little bit just because um, of the material that is being used. But so far, these have done super, super well for me and I'm seeing no issues. Now, what made me think about using burlap is that she also used sandwich bags to wrap her seedlings. So you can really use a lot of stuff and maybe think outside the box when it comes to maybe reusing your plastics that are in your house. So now that we have seen how completely awesome these are, let's jump into actually how to make these. No matter what material you use, I'm gonna recommend that you cut this about six to seven inches high. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that this has enough space to fill with dirt, but also that you give it room to actually grow roots down. So after I have cut my burlap in the strips, I am just going to fill these with soil. To come to the soil with these, I'm gonna start them the same way that I would start any other soil mix. I have a video on the channel if you wanna see, but just make sure that it is moist, that it is wet, that it's not holding too much water, but that it is still um, holds together and so that it is not like crumbling out of your hand. I'm going to lay that soil down, maybe about a half an inch, all the way throughout. And I'm gonna recommend that you leave about a good, maybe two to three inches on the very end, because if you are going to up pot them or give them more soil, they are gonna get a little bit larger and expand. Now this is my first time doing it, but in my brain, I'm just going to leave room just in case that has to happen and I have more material to work with. After all the soil is laid out, you are just going to gently roll it, literally like if you were maybe rolling a sushi. Where the snail part comes through. Because when you look on the side and you turn it, you're gonna see that perfect little spiral that is very familiar and looks like a snail shell. Snail shell. Try to say that like five times. Snail shell, snail shell, snail shell, snail shell, snail shell. You know what, I did pretty good. <laughs> so you are gonna be left with these really pretty looking spiral snail shells. And now the next thing you're gonna do is place your seeds. Now I have seeds that I have started from a, about a week ago. I've got bok choy, a lettuce mix, some spinach, and a foxglove flower. Now I'm pretty sure I should not have started foxglove in this like this. I'm pretty sure I supposed to start that in the fall. So we're gonna ignore that one. So I feel like when it comes to seeding the seed snail, it really depends on the seed. When it comes to my lettuce or maybe my bok choy, my spinaches, I'm going to maybe lightly seed them on the top. But when it comes to the tomatoes and the peppers, I got a little bit more intentional about where I actually placed these at. Now I did do more than one seed and each hole just because that's just what I do, and I can just weed it down to one. But when it comes to seed starting, you're really just still going to go with what is on the package when it comes to depth. And also, you're not gonna wanna maybe start your carrots or your beets, any of your root crops this way. This is gonna be great for the things that you're already really gonna start in your trays. Once you have 
everything seeded, you're gonna give it just one more gentle water. Now what I've seen with the seedlings that I've started already is that I have top watered them and they have been completely fine. Another thing she recommends when germinating the seedlings and they seed snails is to put a little baggie, a little clear baggie just on top, just until they germinate and then you can take it off once they germinate. So next, once everything has germinated and you now have sprouts coming out of your seed snail, now it is time to thin. So I heavily seeded my bok choy and now I am just going around and just picking and spacing out the seedlings so that they have a little bit more room to grow. You can do this by pulling them out. You can do this by just cutting it right at the very end. Whatever you do when you do normal seedlings, you just do right here. When it comes to up potting, the creator just unravels it, puts more dirt on top of it and re-rolls it back. And so that is why I am leaving a little bit of a gap at the end to make sure that I can accommodate anything if I have to up pot it. I can honestly say that so far, so good. This is my lettuce seeds right now. Um, I'm gonna wait for them to get a little bit bigger before I actually go through these but my bok choy and my spinach are looking really, really good. So please let me know, is this something that you would try? Have you ever heard of a seed snail? I think that this actually might be a thing in Europe, but I've never seen this done in my life because honestly, I think that this might be a complete game changer when it comes to being eco-friendly, it comes to saving space. I love this and I am rooting for this hack to be like an ultimate hack. So let me know down below and keep an eye out to see exactly how these grow and how we transfer them into the garden. As always friends, you are awesome, you are wonderful, you are dope, and I am so thankful for you. Bye.